Well, I was uh, curious why I was invited to this festival some years back when uh, Marek uh, got in touch with me. And I actually wrote him back saying, I think you may have the wrong person because um, I'm not a cinematographer. And um, while I write about film people and I've written a number of books about movie stars and what have you, and I've interviewed hundreds and hundreds of them, he came to my house a few times. Um, and one time he, he, he said to me, would you like to know why I've invited you? And I said, I would love to know. And he told me a story. And the story has become one of my favorite stories of all time. And, and it just completely blew my mind when I heard it. And what happened was is that he um, was, uh, wanted to go to film school around 1985 or 86. And he didn't get in, and he ended up going, being drafted in the Army during a time in your history when you were uh, not free. And he was put in an area in the north, maybe it was around here, I don't know, but in northern Poland. Um, and part of his job was to destroy the banned books. And books would come in by the truckload. And, and um, you know, he and fellow officers were, uh, were, were destroying these books. And one day he picked up a book that caught his attention and it was called Conversations with Capote, which was my book. And then he and a friend started talking about how could they talk to Marlon and Brando? How could they talk to Truman Capote? How could they do that? And they came up with an idea. Let's start a film festival. And then he spoke with someone older than him, someone in the business, who suggested, if you want to start a festival, you should do a cinematographer's festival. Because there is no cinematographer's fe festival. And directors will come, actors will come, because people will honor their cinematographer. So I kind of inspired him. I, no, I'm not, I don't think so. I don't think I'm starstruck. I think I admire talent. And I, you know, and with me, I mean, the people who will take my breath away, they're not movie stars, really. They're, they're writers. You know, uh, when I was with Truman Capote or Saul Bellow or Norman Mailer, um, these are the people that I read growing up and, you know, and respected. J.P. Donlevy, I, I went to see him, you know, and I've kept in touch with them. I had Donlevy write the introduction to my Art of the Interview book. Um, and I can't believe it, you know, it's like, you know, now I'm talking to them like we're equal, but we're not, you know, <laughs> I mean, I know my place. Um, but, you know, there are only a handful of writers that I would feel, like Philip Roth, who I've tried to interview for years, uh, never wanted to, and now he said he stopped writing, but I, I, I regret not having interviewed him. Um, Don DeLillo, Cormac McCarthy, there are a few writers that, that I'd like to talk to, um, not to say that, you know, when I'm with Brando, you know, I'm not nervous. You know, when I go to his island and he picks up my bag and takes me to my little hut and I'm going to be alone on an island with this man who uh, uh, had just done Apocalypse Now. And, um, you know, it was a challenge, uh, you know, because, you know, it's, and it's a responsibility. Uh, to, to, sometimes I, I've gotten assignments like when Patty Hearst, I don't know if you remember who Patty Hearst was, but she was kidnapped. Uh, some years back and uh, she joined this SLA, she shot up people, she ends up going on trial, she's an heiress. Well, when she finally gets out of jail, I was the first reporter to do the, a big extensive interview with her. And, and everybody in the country wanted that interview. So I, I felt, you know, I better do a good job. You know, if you screw this up, everybody's going to be, you know, complaining, you know, you'd made a mistake, you didn't ask this, you didn't do that. So I prepare a great deal. And I think when you prepare a great deal, it keep, it's, it, you don't get so starstruck. I've been told I do. I mean, people who read my, my books, especially the novels, you know, say that, you know, as a matter of fact, there is a young man uh, 
uh, that I've met in Poland who's read the uh, Catch a Fallen Star. It was called The Resurrection of Leighton Cross in, in, in Poland. To, to get his degree, and he's already got a law degree, um, he's, he's been trying to make a movie out of this. Out of this. Uh, I have a script I've written about the novel, and, uh, and I've given him permission to do it because I thought it would help him, you know, graduate. But he spent, he spent a full year, you know, developing it and, okay, and sending me budgets and this and that, and we'll see what happens. But the movie business is a hard business, you know. It's not, you know, I, I don't have control of it. I have control of my writing, and that's what I, 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 I appreciate.